is the secret to Psyduck's psychic ability in its bill. Welcome back to Shelby on Safari, the place where I, a wild animal biologist and Pokemon trainer, love to use the biology of our real life Pokemon to examine the biology of some of our favorite Pokemon, like Psyduck, which some people say is the best Pokemon. And while we certainly aren't answering that question today, we are looking into their psychic ability. I really want to look into why does Psyduck, the duck Pokemon, have have a psychic ability. And is Psyduck really even a duck? So you ready? Join the safari and let's get started. Psyduck, the duck Pokemon, first introduced to us in Generation 1. Back in Kanto, Psyduck is firmly a fan favorite and has shown up across many different aspects of the Pokemon franchise. From, of course, our buddy Misty having a Psyduck, ay ay ay, to more recently in Pokemon Concierge. But why is this delightful duck Pokemon always having a headache? Even though it's listed as just being a water type, the Pokedex entries hint to them having more of a psychic power. And this got me wondering about our real life Pokemon. There's one animal that has a duck in its name, but definitely looks like a real life Pokemon. I'm of course talking about our favorite egg-laying mammal, apart from the echidna, the duck-billed platypus. First thought to be a hoax by scientists because of, well, Look at it. The duck-billed platypus have, well, an amazing snout, but there is more to their bill than just being duck-billed. This bill is a lot more complicated. Not only is it surprisingly soft, but it is filled with electroreceptors that allow the platypus to navigate underwater without relying on vision. That's because platypuses are mainly nocturnal and they're bottom feeders. So this could make hunting by sight, well, complicated. Using electroreception allows platypuses to use electrical impulses to locate objects and potential prey in the darkest of waters. One might say like a psychic ability, because think about it, if you're swimming at night underwater in what's already murky water, you're not gonna be able to rely on your vision, sound, you're gonna have to rely on a different sense. Enter in their electroreception. Now, one study found that platypuses spend about 41% of their time during the night looking out for food. Well, not technically looking out, but actually, that got me thinking, how do they define the platypus foraging for food, especially when they're underwater in dark, murky waters? Well, it turns out that the platypuses actually swing their bill from left to right repeatedly, almost like they're scanning for those electrical impulses. But as bottom feeders, what kind of impulses would they be looking out for? Well, they scoop up larvae, insects, shellfish, and worms in their bill. And of course, with that comes a bit of gravel, which actually comes comes in handy because they don't have teeth. So when they picked up their grub and byproducts of gravel, they actually store them in their cheek pouches, come up to the surface and well, use that gravel to mash up their food before swallowing it all down. Mmm, delicious. Now, while their bill is incredible because it's filled up with electroreceptors, we also see two nares or nostrils on both Psyduck and the platypus. The platypus not only can seal its nostrils to be watertight when obviously underwater, but they also have folds of skin that cover their eyes and their ears to prevent water from entering. I wonder if Psyduck has that. Now, one thing that platypuses and Psyduck definitely have in common is they're a bit awkward on land. For platypuses, the webbing on their feet actually retracts to reveal individual nails, which allows them to run. Well, run. They also use these nails to help them dig burrows by the water's edge. And while not super visible on the design of Psyduck, we definitely see when they evolve into Golduck, those nails are definitely more prominent. And now that you know a bit more about the duck-billed platypus, here's my theory about Psyduck's bill and how it plays a role in, well, their headaches. I think, like the duck-billed platypus, Psyduck probably has some kind of electroreceptors inside of their bill as well. Maybe 
maybe also to help them hunt. But it's these electric impulses that might overload the senses of Psyduck, especially since we see most of them on land. Maybe they're just experiencing a sensory overload, which comes across in the form of a headache. Could this sensory overload be linked to their psychic ability? We may never know, but it's certainly fun to explore the connection between our real life Pokemon and that of some of our favorite pocket monsters. In fact, as a self-proclaimed Pokemon biologist like my buddy Jack in Paldea, I've created a full playlist covering a range of Pokemon animal comparisons. So to keep your adventure going, why not check out my playlist right here? And before you head over to that playlist, just wanted to give a shout out to one of Psyduck's biggest fans. Happy birthday! All right, I'll see you over in that playlist. Thanks for watching. Bye!